Main articles. Dark Empire and Operation Shadow Hand in Eleven Abbey, when it seemed the Galactic Empire would never recover, that hopes were lost, and that the New Republic was finally close to victory, an enigmatic figure took the title of Emperor. However, this person was no new Emperor, for Palpatine had returned. Returning in fresh clone bodies imbued with the dead despot's spirit, he proceeded for six years TP rebuild and finally regained the strength to again challenge the New Republic. While most of the rank-and-file troops returned to loyal service, few of the warlords did, while most fled for their lives. Palpatine regrouped the fragmented Empire's many warlords and loyal forces to fight alongside Highest Dark Empire, a revived Sith regime based on secret throne world of Biss in the Deep Core. Determined to crush the weakened New Republic and once again subjugate the galaxy under his dark rule, the Galactic Emperor initiated a military campaign known as Operation Shadow Hand. Eventually, Palpatine intended to transform the Galactic Empire into a megocracy in which he ruled the galaxy forever with his loyal dark side adepts. The Emperor turned Jedi Knight Luke Skywalker to the dark side of the Force to serve as the new Supreme Commander of the Imperial Forces, but Skywalker defected back to the New Republic and the astromech droid R2-D2 programmed the Emperor's awe-inspiring superweapons, the World Devastators, to destroy each other during the First Battle of Morn Calamari. In the Battle of Pinnacle Base, Palpatine summoned a force storm to obliterate a New Republic fleet orbiting Da Socha V. However, Skywalker and his sister Leia Organa solo used the force, causing the storm to annihilate Palpatine and his flagship, the Eclipse-class Dreadnought Eclipse. While Palpatine was presumably dead, the Shadow Hand strategy was taken over by the Emperor's most powerful Darksider, military executor Cedrus Ql. Cedrus suffered heavy casualties in attempting to occupy the factory world of Balmora and perished in the Battle of Ossus. However, the Emperor returned once again to spearhead his galactic conquest and commissioned his newest superweapon, the Galaxy Gun. The superweapon destroyed Da Socha V, the space city, Crinamanan and Hersey, forcing numerous inner rim and mid-rim worlds into accepting imperial rule. The Empire had succeeded in conquering most of the galaxy and becoming the leading galactic superpower while the New Republic was on the brink of downfall. However, a group of Imperial politicians and officers, led by Karna Jax and Sarchev Quest, sabotaged the Emperor's clone bodies in order to assassinate Palpatine and take control of the Imperial State. In the skirmish on Onderon, Emperor Palpatine's final clone body was killed and mortally wounded Jedi Knight Empatojeo's brand took the Galactic Emperor's spirit to the netherworld of the Force. Following the Emperor's final demise, the Star Dreadnought Eclipse II was programmed to collide with the Galaxy Gun, destroying both superweapons. The Galaxy Gun accidentally launched a particle disintegrator warhead on Biss, destroying the planet and killing its inhabitants. In these cataclysmic events, the Empire lost the Galactic Emperor, two superweapons, the Imperial fleet orbiting Biss, and most of Palpatine's loyal advisors, officers, soldiers and dark side adepts. The last major action of a Sith-led empire, Operation Shadow Hand resulted in the final destruction of Palpatine's empire, as the destruction of Biss effectively terminated all political and military structures that upheld the imperial state. Without the leadership and guidance of the late Emperor Palpatine, the Galactic Empire had practically ceased to exist. In the midst of chaos, rival warlords fled to their pocket empires, disorganized imperial forces abandoned the core worlds, and the New Republic retook Coruscant. As a result, the resurrected empire fell to its knees and self-destructed.